Uh, okay, so if you remember, we started talking about the squaring and conjugate patterns. I just want to uh, complete it a little bit by giving you uh, more diversity of problems, okay? Um, and if you are interested, of course, I also give you a link to the Le Conte Lanieri when I write which pages you read. I will put a link from one of my videos from my own YouTube channel. It's of course more advanced one, but I think if you practice on algebra, uh, it will actually, it's worthy to practice as much as you can on algebra. Okay, so let me just recap a little bit here. So if you remember, we talked about the squaring patterns. I gave you two versions because the book has mentioned two versions. So let me just write it here. Um, so squaring patterns. So it's completely common in mathematics that we sometimes have the sum of two terms and I want to square it, yes? So I have a term, call it A, another term, call it B. I add them and then my goal is to square it. And I emphasize that don't uh, make sure that you understand that this is not correct. A plus B squared is not A squared plus B squared. So hopefully if you remember, and I told you it's better to memorize these formulas, okay? A squared, the first one to the two, plus two times the first one times the second one, and then plus the second one to the two, okay? So this formula, we write it in mathematics like this, but you need to be able to read it in your own language. So this tells you that whenever I have the sum of two terms and I want to square that sum, I can use this rule. The rule tells me that to do this properly, to expand it properly, you go and take the first one and square it. And then you write two times the first one times the second one. And then finally you square the second one. And then at the end, you add all of them. This is the correct expansion of this expression. And what happens, you might say that what happens if I have the difference of two terms? The only thing that happens is A squared this becomes minus two times the first one times the second one, but the second one also becomes, the last one also becomes positive. So these are two versions. So let me call the number one, version number one and version number two. I really want you to memorize them even though you will get them always in the formula sheet. Uh, okay. And then we also learned, okay, by the way, I told you that whenever it is mentioned, use a squaring pattern to expand this expression. If you just multiply them, even though in principle, that's completely correct. You multiply A plus B by itself two times, and then you start multiplying it one by one. The answer is definitely correct, but this is not acceptable for that particular question because that question is asking to know about your skills. How do you know about squaring patterns or not? So that's what I, I mentioned that please try to learn these rules and try to use them so that you become comfortable with using them. And then uh, there is also another pattern which we learned about and that's called, uh, that's also very ubiquitous in mathematics and that's called conjugate pattern. Uh, So that pattern is A plus B multiplied by A minus B. So what does it mean? It means that I have two terms, once added, once subtracted, and then I want to multiply these two results. Then, of course, I can use this conjugate pattern. It becomes the first one to the two minus the second one to the two. First of all, I told you that this is always negative. Don't be fooled by that. This is even, I should put positive. No, because this two is acting only on B. It does not affect this negative sign. And very important thing that I remember Roko asked is that which one is the first one and which one is the second one? There is, of course, in the way that you see here, I have written A, the first one, B, the second one, but someone can change it in this way and write it in this form. Should I write it B squared minus A squared or should I write it A squared minus B squared? 
because then it becomes it a little bit ambiguous. If you look here, the first one is B. If you look here, the first one is A. Which one we should choose? The one with the negative sign is important, okay? So he, even if I write it in this way, this is not the correct answer because a steel, the first one, is a why because when you want to recognize which one is the first one you need to go to see which one is the first one in the one containing the negative side that is important not the one in the uh, addition one because of course there is no difference between a plus b and b plus a so that's the important thing. Of course, it doesn't matter if I have A minus B first and A plus B second. Again, the answer is A squared minus B squared. If you want, I can write it with a different color here, but that's exactly the same thing. It doesn't matter if I multiply A minus B by A plus B or A plus B by A minus B. Yes, both of them are the same. So definitely the answer should also be the same. So I will not call it two versions. They are actually the same. So we learned about these two before uh, in the previous session and we just solved some simple problems. Let me expand and broaden our point of view about the problem a little bit more and then we are done. So you, if you have enough time, you can practice on your own. Otherwise we can uh, leave it for the next session. So let me write examples here. Using the patterns, using the above patterns, expand each item. And of course, always it simplifies implicit here and simplify them. Same. So for example, do you think uh, I can use this pattern to, to, calc to expand A plus B plus C squared? Uh, in the beginning might be you say, no, I don't have exactly this form. So might be you think that the only way that you can answer this expansion is to write it two times and start multiplying them. Of course, this is always correct, but I want you to be able to use these patterns as much as possible, okay? Of course, this is written as a three term to the two, and this squaring patterns works for two terms. Whenever this happens, I think you have enough experience. Can you tell me how should I use this squaring pattern to expand this one? even though apparently they are not the same patterns? Maybe, if I guess, maybe it's um, A squared plus B squared plus C squared plus 2ABC. No. Okay. First of all, first of all, I want you to, I want you to understand that you cannot guess because this is what I'm saying. When you have this formula, I told you mathematics is an unforgivable science, yes? So this formula is 100% correct for this and only this one. Uh, you cannot draw some analogy. Of course, analogy and this way of creative thinking might help, but at the end of the day, you need to have a rigorous proof that that guess is correct. So first of all, that was good that Rocco mentioned this you will see that this pattern is not the correct pattern. But I didn't ask you about the pattern. I asked you, can I, can I modify this a little bit so that I can use the same pattern even for three numbers? Uh, I have an idea. Yes. So, I think we should say like, um, if you look at the first uh, example up there, we have squared uh, the both terms that we had, so A and B. 
So that we should also do that for the second, so for the um, example you've given us. So no, again, have, again, this is uh, casual. This is a, again a guess. You want to discover a pattern, but, but even if you discover that pattern, you need to verify that pattern is correct. Um, and that so. is not my I, my goal is not to discover the pattern. This tells you. Let me let me. Might be my question is not very clear. I am telling you that the main pattern tells you how to square the add the sum of two numbers. If as soon as I have the sum of two numbers and I want to square it, I don't have any problem. I can use a squaring pattern. But now I am asking you, can I use a squaring pattern for two numbers for a squaring of three numbers? Okay, so the answer oh. is yes. yes. Hello, yes. Okay, my answer was no. One of the microphones is on. May you please just turn it off if you are not answering my question. Yeah. So here, uh, you 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 said no, but you got disappointed very early, like very soon. We shouldn't actually. I don't know what this is, what this noise is. Okay. So the answer is yes, but let me might be, let me just tell you what I mean. A plus B plus C is the sum of three terms, but I can do it. Uh, this is disturbing. Okay, so I would say that A plus B plus C is the sum of two terms. Let me, let me see what's going on, okay. Okay, so I think, I think I didn't uh, explain myself very well. So what I'm trying to say is that is it possible to view to view the sum of three numbers as the sum of two numbers? Yes. Maybe. Yes. Can you tell me why? How? First, you add two of the uh, three variables together, and then you use that as one. Exactly. Uh, exactly. So, for example, you can view this as the sum of two numbers. But I put B plus C into one pair of brackets. And for example, I can call it capital B. Then it becomes A plus capital B. So even though it's still this is the same expression, it's A plus capital B. But if I ask you how many terms are involved in this new way of looking at the same expression, you would say there are two. One of them is little a, the other one is capital B. So this idea you need to learn. So here, even though this, I would write it in this way. Let me write with green. This green is the solution. I will write it in this way. I would say to myself that, okay, this is the sum of three terms. Either I need to know a, an, another pattern for this one, or I can use the same pattern that I already know to solve this problem. Okay. For example, I can interpret it in this way. I can write A and I can put B plus C in another pair of brackets the reason that I am doing this is, is that I am looking, I am trying to see this sum as the sum of two expressions. Now, if I, if I ask you in this expression, what is the first one? You would tell me the first one is A. If I ask you what is the second one? Yes, you would say that B plus C as a whole is my second one. And then I want to square it. But now I know the squaring pattern in English or in Swedish, whatever language you want to use. You, you will say that this, is, this tells me that the first one to the two, here the first one is A, so it becomes the first one to the two, plus two times the first one times the second one. But the second one is B plus C as a whole. And then I will ask you what the what is coming next. The coming next is the second one to the two. So the second one to the two is here. So this is the trick I want you to learn. 
So even though this is the sum of three terms, but I can view it as the sum of two terms, and I use the squaring pattern up to this point. But of course, it is not finished yet because you see that there are two pairs of brackets left. When I expand, it means that I need to continue until there is, there is no pair of brackets left. Okay, for this one, I don't see any pattern. This is uh, inevitable. I have to take this one and multiply it here. So there is no pattern involved here. But is there any pattern involved here? It's the squaring pattern again. Exactly. Again, the yeah. squaring pattern with two terms. So you see, uh, I continue. I will write A squared and then I multiply 2a inside that pair of brackets, so it becomes 2ab plus 2ac. And then the, the next one, what I do, I will square it using the squaring pattern. So it becomes b squared, the first one to the two, two times the first one times the second one, plus the second one to the two, and end of the story. So this is the expansion because there is no thing. But of course, here, I prefer to write it more organized. This is not mandatory. You can just stop there. But this is also a famous pattern, but this is not in the book. Uh, it doesn't mean that you, don't, you are not able to answer it. Yes, you are, but this is not in your formula sheet. So it becomes two times A plus B, two times A times C, sorry, two times A, B, two times AC plus two times BC. So, so Rocco's guess was close, but you see it is what it was not correct. So there is no two ABC involved. Yes, I have a two AB, I have a two AC and I have a two BC. But of course, if you follow those videos that I have uh, on my own YouTube channel, I have talked about these identities, by the way, these called these squaring patterns, conjugate patterns, they are called algebraic identities. So I have a lot of videos related to algebraic identities, but that is only for those students who really want to math, know mathematics as a subject. Okay, that that mathematics is their goal. Otherwise, you don't need to go and listen. Okay. Now, I want to wait a little bit for you. I hope that now you understand what is this one, uh, what is the idea. I want to give you this. I have A, I will have minus 2B, I have plus C, and then I will have minus D, okay? And then I want to square it. I want to wait for you five minutes, okay? So that you can expand it for me. And I want you to use I want you to use patterns as much as possible, okay? Uh, and the patterns, don't use this pattern. Of course, this one is now also a pattern. You can see this one, but don't use this one, the one in the book. Use these patterns if necessary to calculate and expand this one for me. I give you five minutes, okay? Okay, so here, can you tell me the starting point? The starting point is actually important for me. The rest of it is the calculation. I can do it myself. So this is the sum and subtraction of four terms, yes? One, two, three, four. Okay, can you tell me how can I use a squaring pattern, which originally was written only for two terms in this case? Uh, you start in the same way that you did in the first one. So you uh, add up two of the variables with, um, uh, so you make two pairs. So for Yes, example, you mean that I take these two as one pair, yes? Yeah, exactly. And then you do the same for the other one. The other two pairs, yes. Now, if I call it capital A in my head, if I call this capital B in my head, if I ask you now how many terms are involved, then you will say two. Can I use my pattern? Yes, because that's the sum of two terms squared. Yes, exactly. So that's, you. you got the point. And of course, these things couldn't be always easy to guess. So if you want to know more, you can go and watch those videos on my own YouTube channel. That is actually fun. When I was in high school in Iran, we were actually studying all of these things, but now they are considered to be higher than the level. I don't think that it is not possible for you to understand them. Okay. So here I will open two pairs of brackets here. 
and then we realize that I can take the first two, the first two as a minus two b two into one single term, and then plus uh, c minus d into another one. Then I have two. Now in this form, if I ask you which one is the first one, you will say a minus two b as a whole is my first term, and c minus d as the second is my second term. So it means that I have two terms involved. Then I read this phrase in English or your own language. You would say that a squaring pattern tells me that a square the first one. So I will square it. And then write two times the first one times the second one. And then plus the second one squared. You see, uh, this is very important to understand. This formula is not very limited. It is not just for letters A and B or two. The way that you interpret the formula is important. So this helps me to write this. But now you see that these two are again squaring patterns, but the second version, because I have negative sign between them, but there is not no pattern involved here. So for the middle term, I. It's, I don't have any choice. I have to just multiply. But for these two, I can still use the squaring pattern version two, yes? Okay, a squaring pattern version two tells me that if you want to square the difference of two terms, you square the first one minus two times the first one times the second one, and then plus the second one squared. So it becomes the first one to the two, minus two times the first one times the second one plus the second one to the two. But for the middle one, let us do them in parallel. I have three terms involved and I hopefully you have enough experience now. For example, I choose multiply two inside first. So it becomes two a minus four b. And then I keep the next one, c minus d. But for the last one, I can use again the second version of the squaring pattern. So it becomes the first one to the two, two times the first one times the second one, plus the second one to the two. Now I still have to continue to remove all pairs of brackets. So this becomes a squared, minus two times two is minus four, and then I have a b. So it becomes minus four a b, and then I have plus 4b squared. And then plus here, I have to multiply these things one by one. So the first one becomes 2ac minus 2ad <clears throat> minus 4bc and then positive 4bd. And the, less, the rest of it is this one. And then before making, before finalizing the problem, you have to make sure that there are no similar terms involved. But a quick look, you can convince yourself, no, there are no similar terms. Do you see any? No. So you can keep it like this. If you want, you can organize it, but this is not a very famous pattern. So I can just leave it like that. So that is the expansion. So these two examples shows that you can broaden your point of view to even use the squaring pattern in those cases that are not exactly according to the one that we write. Any questions here? The same thing also happens for the conjugate pattern. So let me go to the, yeah, we have enough space here. So number three, let me give you, for example, this. Uh, I multiply x plus 2y plus z by x plus 2y minus z. Okay, here my emphasis is on the conjugate pattern. The conjugate pattern apparently is useful when I am dealing with two terms, once added, once subtracted, and we want to multiply them. Might be you say to yourself that, okay, this is not working in this case because I, am, I have three terms involved, but a closer look will reveal the pattern for you. I don't want to reveal it. I want to hear it from you. Can you say how? 
Yeah, you can do the same thing. You can just uh, uh, put x plus two y in brackets plus uh, exactly. z, and it exactly. becomes. But like... for two of them, exactly, yeah. exactly. So let me. That is the. So if you learn this one, then you are on the safe side from this point of view. So this becomes x plus two y. I consider this package as one thing, and then I will have plus z. Hopefully, you understand that there is no difference between this what I have written here and this one. The only thing is that. I am convincing myself that I can view it as the sum of two terms. And then I have the same scenario in the second pair of brackets, but this is this four. Of course, this is why, this is good, but is this now a conjugate pattern? You need to convince yourself, yes, I have two numbers here, Let no, sorry. I have two numbers, two terms, one of them is this, the other one is this. Once they are added, once the same two expressions are subtracted, and I am interested in multiplying them. So you see, that is, that is the conjugate pattern. So the conjugate pattern tells you what to do, tells you write the first one to the two minus the second one to the two. But which one should be interpreted as the first one? I need, I need to look into this pair of brackets, the one with negative sign. Then one then in here, this is coming first. So the first means this. So I would write it as equal to x plus two y squared minus the second one squared is z squared. It's clear that the problem is not finished because uh, still a pair of brackets is left. But can I use another pattern to continue? The answer is yes. Which pattern now? Squaring, squaring pattern. pattern. Exactly. So you, you're learning. So it means that's clear. So the first one to the two plus two times the first one times the second one, but you are now experienced. You can do it in your head. Two times the first one is two X times the second one is two Y. So it becomes four X Y. And then the second one to the two, again, you can do it in your head. So it becomes four Y squared, but then I will have a minus Z squared at the end. Yes, so that is also possible here. And this is finished because there is no brackets left and then there is no similar term. So this is the end of the problem. Uh, let me give you another one. I want to wait a little bit for you. This is more tricky. So let me see how do you act here. So I will give you four terms, uh, but let me arrange them in a little bit a strange way. So. Um, yeah, let me double check. Yes, this is a little bit uh, harder. So let me give you some time. Uh, okay, so any ideas what to do? Of course, it needs a little bit of experience. So by seeing these problems, you probably can solve the, the ones coming. But do you have any idea what to do now? I think I know what to do first. So maybe, okay, how, what should I do? Uh, just start by making it into two groups within each, uh, like, parenthesis parenthesis thing so you yes, have exactly. a plus c i want you to be explicit yes you, the yes. idea is correct but what do you want to do for the uh, first one Can you, tell you, me? you want uh, a plus c uh, in one pair and then minus two b plus d can you tell me how should i write it exactly that okay. is the point you, you are right yes what should yes. i write minus what minus within parentheses two b yes. plus d and very good. Yeah, very good. That was the tricky part here. Very good. Uh, so actually, he was able to manage to write it in this way. First of all, we have to understand that this is the same expression as here. These pair of brackets can be simply removed because there is nothing behind them. It means that that's a positive. So it becomes a plus c. 
But if I want to remove this pair of brackets, this minus sign goes for this one and that one. So it becomes minus 2b minus d. Now, if I ask you, are these two expressions the same? You would say yes, because positive a, positive a, negative 2b, negative 2b, positive c, positive c, and negative d, negative d. Okay? Might be the, so. First of all, I wanted to convince you that what you have written here is exactly this expression. And then you might say, what is the benefit of doing that? You need to be a little bit patient to see why this is beneficial here, because I can do the same grouping in the second one, and I can write a plus c plus 2b plus d. Yes? <clears throat> this is not as strange at all, because all of them are positive, so actually I really don't need to be careful. I can just group them in this way. But what is the benefit now? You see, the conjugate pattern, which was not clear from the beginning, emerges right now, yes? I have two expressions, once subtracted. The same two expressions are now added, and then I am interested in multiplying this combination. Whenever this happens, it's a conjugate pattern. And Bob the conjugate Buck? pattern, yes? Um, so... Why isn't it uh, negative two d, uh, negative two b, and negative d in the parentheses? So I told you because if you have negative two b, you mean this? No, negative two b and negative d within the parentheses. No, that is also correct. But what do you want to put behind behind the uh, what? What do you write here now? Uh, a a positive sign. A positive sign, and what do you write here? On the other side, I wrote, I write a negative sign. Uh, no, let me let me let me make it clear. A minus two b plus c minus d. Can you just read exactly what you want to write, including pair of brackets and whatever you want to write? Okay, brackets. Uh, yes. Then the first pair, uh, a plus c. Yes. Uh, plus. Close. Yes. Uh, yeah, exactly. Close bracket. Uh, plus uh, bracket negative 2b, negative d, close bracket. Yes. What you have written here, you this is correct, but this okay. is not useful. Okay. So what I'm trying to say, let us let us pretend that you have we want to do this. This equality is true. What you have written is not wrong. What, what I'm saying is that this is not useful in this way of collecting. Why? Because then it becomes a plus c plus minus 2b minus d. That is correct. But what you want to do for the second one, can you tell me that one as well? You put uh, ac first group, uh, a plus c yes. first group, and second group uh, is, uh, well, ne um, before the bracket, it's negative. Um, and then the brackets. Uh, negative 2b and negative d. Yes, if, uh, okay. So if you do it in that way, that is correct. It's just inefficient. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit a strange way of looking to the problem. Okay, thank you. But this is not wrong. This is correct. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. So you are, you are working with extra negative signs, but everything is correct. So it will give you the correct answer but you need to be careful about more negative signs. Okay, thank yeah, you. Yeah. This is why I prefer this one. And I think you also uh, confirmed that this is simpler to write, yes? Yeah. Okay, now uh, I continue. So that was very good. At least your understanding is perfect, but you actually make it a little bit longer. So now what we can do is that we can write uh, the first one to the two. Which one is the first one? Because let me read the pattern again here. The, pat the conjugate pattern tells me that the first one to the two always and always negative sign the second one to the two, yes? So which one is the first one? I need to go and see which pair of brackets has the negative sign between the terms. And that is this one. So this means this is the first one. This is the second one. So then I will write the first one to the two the first one to the two minus the second one to the two. But now each one of these is a squaring pattern, but this negative sign is tricky. You have to be careful about that. So the first one, I don't need to be careful at all. 
because there is no sign behind that, I just use the squaring pattern. The first one to the two, two times the first one times the second one, the second one to the two. Okay, just, just wait a moment, please. Sorry, the washing machine is actually making a little bit of noise. <laughs> okay, and then here, this minus sign is crucial. Promise yourself that you will never make these mistakes. This minus sign, I would prefer to write it in two steps. I would put a minus sign here, and then I open a pair of brackets. Then I will use the uh, squaring pattern for this bit. This tells me the first one to the two. You can do it in your head. It becomes 4b squared. And then 2 times the first one, which is 4b, times the second one, which is 4bd. So this becomes 4bd. And then I will have the second one to the 2, which is d squared. The reason that I told you be careful, because I have seen students make mistake, and usually they put this minus sign only for the first one. But this minus sign, goes for here, here, and hold here. So then it becomes a squared plus 2ac plus c squared minus 4b squared minus 4bd, and finally minus d squared. And that would be my final answer. Uh, so hopefully you understand now what's going on. Of course, these problems can be much more fun but we don't have that much time. I want to see, I want to show you another type of problems that you can use to solve this. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. So here, let me change the type of the example. Example. Uh, calculate. each one. Okay, let us keep the titles short. Okay, for example, uh, this is also interesting. For example, if I ask you calculate 110 to power two, of course, this is not a very big problem. You can put this in the calculator and get the answer. And if, I, if you don't have calculated, probably again, it's not that hard to multiply it by itself two times. But you can use the squaring pattern here. That is my goal. I want you to broaden your point of view about solving problems. If I want to do this, one way of looking at the problem is to write 110 as 100 plus 10 and then to power two, for example, yes? And then I can see that I can have the squaring pattern. So the squaring pattern tells me that I can write it as 100 to power two, two times the first one, times the second one, and finally probably the second one to the two. Yes, do you realize that? This is, the con this is the squaring pattern. But calculating these numbers are easy, yes? Easier than the first one, because 100 to power two is simply 10,000. Two times 100 is 200, times 10 is just 2,000. And then finally, the last one is 100. And if I add them, it becomes 12,100. So that is the answer to this using the squaring pattern. Of course, I'm not saying that this is very interesting problem, but I just want you to see the application of this can be something like this. You, you see, I was able to calculate it using this one. Why do you think I wrote this? Do you think if I write 98 plus 12 to the power of two, this also works or not? Is it wrong to write this? No. It is not wrong to this, but it is as it is not efficient. Because yes. if I write yeah. this, I have to write 98 to power two, two times 98 plus times 12, and then plus 12 to power two. But calculating these things mentally is not easy. So if I write this one, I would say this is not false. This is true. It's still, this is true, but not efficient. But this way of breaking it up is efficient. Okay, let me give you another example, uh, number two. Uh, what do you think about this 
one. If I want to multiply 102 by 98, do you see any kind of pattern that will help me here to solve this easier? And assume that you don't have your calculator with you. The conjugate pattern? Yes, can you tell me how should I write it as a conjugate pattern that is efficient? No, I haven't figured that out yet. No, but that's not hard because your pattern is correct. Anyone else? I know the point is to find a pattern, but can't you just do... Oh, wait, I, 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 see, it, I see it, I see it. Sorry, uh, sorry, yeah. Doctor, you can continue. Okay, no, uh, I was just gonna say, I mean, I don't know what it's called in English, but in Swedish it's called like upställning. You like play, you can like, um, there, it's a method. I don't know if you know about it. Like no, you do, like I don't, I don't know about that method, but might be that method, the the validity of that method is probably related to the conjugate pattern. Okay. Uh, can I say what I realized? Yes. Yes. Uh, you have one hundred. Within parenthesis, within parenthesis uh, 100 yes. plus 2, end of parenthesis, and then new parenthesis, 100 minus 2. Exactly. So what is uh, you are saying is completely correct, because you are thinking that instead of 102, you write 100 plus 2. Of course, you can write this in infinitely many possibilities. You can write, I don't know, 97 plus 5 or whatever. The reason that you have chosen this, because you are seeing ahead of yourself to make a pattern. And now everyone realizes that 100 plus 2 is just another name for 102, and 100 minus 2 is another name for 98. So what I have put here as equality, as equality is completely valid. But now why this is efficient, because now I can see that the conjugate pattern emerges. And then this tells me that the answer is the first one to the 2 minus the second one to the 2. But calculating 100 to power 2 is not hard for us to do it mentally. It becomes 10,000. And the same for 2 to power 2 is 4. And subtracting these two numbers are very simple. So it's 9,996. So you see, even without calculator, it is not a big mess to calculate this. But I don't know. Are you ready for a challenge? Don't think that this is always the case. But let me make Yes. I just yes, this please. Is, this is not challenge us, please. Yes. You can just ignore this if you don't like it. But for example, even if you have calculator available, it's not that easy to calculate this expression. So can you calculate this one? This is very creative. You have to be very creative to uh, calculate this. Uh, let me let me change this level because I don't want to put this is at the level of the book. These two examples that I mentioned are some of the exercises are of this type. But let me uh, write another example. Uh, I would say that without calculator, show that two plus one multiplied by two to power two plus one multiplied by 2 to power 4 plus 1, multiplied by 2 to power 8 plus 1, multiplied by 2 to power 16 plus 1, is 2 to power 32 plus 1. Even if you have calculator, it's not that easy to convince you. Of course, you can, of course, put all these numbers in the calculator, multiply them, and put this number in the calculator and multiply them. And then, but of course, I can continue this pattern for a, a little bit longer steps, and then the calculator is not capable of calculating very big numbers because the display is not enough to show all the digits. Okay, but I just want you to I want you to be able to convince yourself that this is the case. Okay, so I will give you a little bit of time to see. Of course, you need to be very experienced in solving these kinds of problems, yes. Uh, so, okay, if you don't mind, let me try to solve this one uh, because I want to uh, 
say something about the exam on Monday for those students who haven't actually had the opportunity because of Corona uh, to join some of the exams, okay? So uh, this is very interesting problem. Uh, let me tell you what to do with, how to do it. I want to say that, okay, this left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. Of course, and the calculator is not available. So these numbers are so big for me to calculate, okay? So what should I do? This is a very nice trick. And I saw this problem when I was at your, at your age, I was very excited. I couldn't actually guess that this would be the case. Let me write something for you and you tell me this is correct or uh, false. I start from the left-hand side. The left-hand side is this expression. But I write it in this way. Do you agree with me, yes or no? Just tell me, do you agree that what I have written for the left-hand side is the correct one? Wait, are you supposed to put a two minus one in the first one? Yes, I just, I don't want to uh, hint more than that, but do you agree with what I have written here for the left-hand side? Uh, how did you get uh, two minus one? Uh, exactly. Now, how and, did you get is something that actually changed my life to mathematics, okay? <laughs> when I saw it, I couldn't guess the solution, but when I saw it, I was excited. So these things accumulated on top. So I was choosing my mathematics as, uh, I chose mathematics as my future, okay? But how I, I, how I understand that's another issue, but is this correct or not? This is another issue. Do you believe that this is a correct statement that I have written here? No. I, I, no, can't, have I don't know. We because I don't understand why there is two minus one, so I can't say. Uh, no, I... but you don't know, you can say. It is a true statement. If I ask you what is two minus one, everyone knows about it. Yeah. What is two minus one? One. One, one. Oh. okay? So this is one yeah. multiplied by this expression, it's, which is equal to itself, do you agree? Yeah. So this is the left-hand side, of course. Oh, shit. But if I multiply it by 2 minus 1, it is the same. It doesn't change. Because 2 minus 1 is just 1. Do you agree now? Yes, I yeah. agree now, yes. Yes. Now, the interesting and nice thing is that this is a conjugate pattern. Yes? It becomes 2 to the 2 minus 1. Agree? Why minus one? Because the first one to the two is two to the two. The second one to the two is one to the two. But one to the two is just one. Do you agree? Let me make sure. Do you agree what we, I have written here is the answer to this? Yes. 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 Okay. But now, I don't know. Can you see what's happening now? This answer with the third one is again a conjugate pattern. Yes? So 2 to the 2 minus 1, 2 to the 2 plus 1. That's a conjugate pattern. So what's the answer? The answer is the first 1 to the 2 minus the second 1 to the 2. But 2 to the 2, again to the 2, it becomes 2 to the 4 minus 1 to the 2 is 1. But now you see that this one with the next one here is another conjugate pattern. So this becomes 2 to the 4 to the 2 minus 1 to the 2, which is 2 to the 8 minus 1. And now this one with this one is another conjugate pattern. So for the same reason, it becomes 2 to the 16 minus 1. And then finally, these last two is also a conjugate pattern. So it becomes 2 to the 32 minus 1. And that is the right-hand side. Yes? So I hope that you understood and enjoyed the problem. Yes, did you? Can you go through it one more time? <laughs> yes. So I, I loved it. Yeah, the tricky part is to write this 2 minus 1. You might say, how should I understand this? Of course, this is not a simple answer because most of the problems that I cannot solve, if I knew how to solve them, I should teach myself first, OK? So, but by experience, you, if, you, if you enjoy problem solving, you have to solve challenging problems over and over again with the hope that 
with the experience that you gain for solving those problems, you can use them to solve another problem. <laughs> so that is the only, I cannot say it's guaranteed. That's just a hope. Okay. Baba. It's a wish. Yes. In the original problem, did you mean to write two to the 32 minus one as the right hand I side? Because you wrote two to the 32 plus one. Ah, in the okay. Original Thank you problem. for correcting me. Thank you very much. You were right. Yeah, might be. This is why the reason other people couldn't solve it. <laughs> yes, this is minus. Yes, thank you very much. Okay, let me just explain it once more. So what I did here, I had the left hand side. the 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 smart point is this: the 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 part that you need to be creative about is to add. 2 minus 1, because 2 minus 1 is just 1. If I multiply a number by 1, I am not changing the result. But you might say that what is the point if I am not changing the result? What is the point of multiplying? Because I know, I don't know, this problem is designed in a way that if you do this, it will work. And these kind of things are hard in mathematics. Okay, but I just explain why this works. If I multiply this by two minus one, nothing is changed because two minus one is indeed one. And then when I do this, the point is that this bit becomes a conjugate pattern. Yes, two numbers subtracted, the same two numbers added and I am multiplying them. So it becomes two to the two minus one. So if I ask you from here to here, what is the answer? You would say it is two to the two minus one. But then this will be multiplied by the next one, two to the two minus one times two to the two plus one. Again, is this a conjugate pattern? The answer is yes. I have two numbers subtracted, the same two numbers added, and I want to multiply them. So the answer is another conjugate pattern. It tells me the first one to the two, minus the second one to the two. So it becomes two to the four minus one. So up to here, I got the answer is two to the four minus one, but immediately this and this will make another conjugate pattern. And then I continue and finally I follow this. I need to be patient two more steps to get the final answer. Uh, okay, so yeah, if you are interested in these kinds of problems, I, I recommend you to go and watch those videos on my own YouTube channel under the title of Advanced High School Algebra, okay? So I have started with algebraic identities. So this is the end of the algebraic identities according to the book, but then I have to go to factorizing polynomials exactly at the level of the book, because if I want to spend a lot of time on this, we will not be able to finish this book, but I want to cover old material more or less in the book. Okay, so if you don't mind, let me just stop this 